Do you know how a fire hose works? Inside the fire engine is a big tank of water. At the back of the fire engine, there are some levers and switches. This is called the pump panel. This controls how much water will flow out of the engine to be used on the fire. Next to this is a large pump and a wheel called a rotor. When the lever is pulled, the rotor spins around very fast. The water flows into the spinning rotor, which creates something called water pressure, which pushes the water out of the hose really fast and really far, which puts up the fire. Isn't that interesting? Let's go to the back of the fire engine to see all of that happening. And the firefighters have given me special permission to use the fire hose. And remember, you should never try this yourself. I can only give it a go because I'm with specially trained firefighters. To make sure I'm safe, I need some protective clothing. <laughs> it smells a little bit. And now, this huge metal arm inside the hopper has come down from the lorry and is dragging all the recycling up and pulling it to the back. The recycling lorry, it sounds alive. It's making so many noises. Even when it stops, it goes, It's a bit like it's sneezing. That was so much fun. Let's see it again in slow motion. Here comes the bin. Tipping, tipping, and there goes the recycling. I'm Maddie, and today I'm on a building site. Just think, the house or flat where you live once started off like this. A great big pile of bricks and wood ready to be made into a building. You should never go onto a building site without a grown-up, but we've got special permission to show you something really exciting. A lot of the things used to make houses are very heavy. Far too heavy for me to pick up, so I need something super clever to help me. Can you guess what it is? A crane! A crane is the safest way to move things around that are too heavy for people to pick up. But do you know how a crane works? Let's find out. Does it work? A crane. Before the crane can do anything, it needs to stand on its own feet. You should never play around vehicles. Always make sure you're near a grown-up. These special feet keep the crane steady when it picks up heavy things and stops it rolling away. Look how it's lifting the wheels off the ground. and today I've come to see a very exciting vehicle. See if you can guess what it is. It carries people in it, it doesn't have wings, and it has a big piece of metal on top that spins round and round. Can you guess what it is? That's right, it's a helicopter. Noisy, isn't it? This bit of the helicopter is called a landing skid, and there are two of them. They're the helicopter's feet. This bit at the front is where the pilot sits to fly the helicopter. It's called the cockpit. And 
then this long part at the back of the helicopter is called the tail boom. And at the end of it is the tail rotor. This spins round and round when the helicopter flies, just like the big rotor at the top. This big rotor is really important because it helps make the helicopter fly. But do you know how a helicopter rotor works? But do you know how a bus ramp works? Let's find out. How does it work? I've come to this factory where they make bus ramps. Here, they make almost 2,000 bus ramps every year for buses all over the world. Here's what the ramp looks like before it goes into a bus. Let's take a closer look. Underneath the bus, next to the wheels, are airbags called bellows. They're full of air and keep the bus level. When the driver presses a button inside the bus, an electric signal goes to the bellows to tell them to let some air out. As the air comes out, the bus gets lower on one side. It's a bit like letting the air out of a rubber ring. When the bus is level with the pavement, the driver presses another button to make the ramp come out. Under the doors, there's a hidden box. Inside the box is a bar fixed to the ramp. When the driver presses the button, the bar moves forward and pushes the ramp out. When the ramp rests on the pavement, it's ready to be used. And then the ramp goes away. The bellows fill back up and the bus drives off. But how do car brakes stop the car? Do you know how car brakes work? Let's find out. How does it work? A car brake. Mama. To see how car brakes work, I've come to a garage. A garage is a place you come to if a car needs to be checked or fixed. Have you ever been to a garage before? This is one of the car's wheels. This is the tyre and the metal bit in the middle is called the rim. But if you look through the rim, can you see there's another metal disc? That is part of the car's brakes, but we can't see it very well, can we? I've got an idea. Paul is a mechanic and he's going to help show us the car's brakes. The car is being lifted on this special lift. This is how mechanics get under a car to safely fix things when they go wrong. Listen to the sound of it. It's noisy, isn't it? And it must be really strong to lift an entire car. It's very high up, isn't it? We're in a consulting room where you see a doctor, and this is the machine. It's called a blood pressure monitor. Your heart pumps blood all around your body, to your head, to your fingers and toes. And doctors and nurses use blood pressure monitors to check that your blood is flowing nicely through your body. It's called checking your blood pressure. Do you know how a blood pressure monitor works? Let's find out. How does it work? A blood pressure monitor. This is Amanda and she's going to check my blood pressure. Blood pressure shows how easily blood passes through your blood vessels. And to measure it, she's going to use the blood pressure monitor. The first thing that Amanda is doing, she's putting this bit, is called the cuff around the top of my arm. 
Now Amanda is pressing a button which makes air travel from the machine through this tube and into the cuff. The cuff is blowing up. It's a little bit like blowing up armbands when you go to the swimming pool. 